Hey, I'm Jesse. Let's have a devotion. Let's talk about what happens when you actually bear spiritual fruit. When someone prays the word of God to God, when someone is filled with the Holy Spirit of God and confesses Jesus as Lord by the power of the Holy Spirit and faith, they believe in their hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead, according to Romans 10, 9, and that means that they are saved. What does that mean? Now, you and I don't have the authority to say this person's a Christian and this person's not. All right, that's, a, that's, a, that's an important thing for you to remember. As an evangelist, you don't have the authority to know with certainty this person's saved, this person's not saved. We don't know. I think you'll be surprised by who's in heaven and who's not. And as, as we do ministry and, and time, you'll, you'll, you'll come to learn more about the historic abuses of, like particularly the Catholic Church, and, and, and not just the Catholic Church, but other very legalistic sects of Christianity that would proclaim like, because you believe this thing, you're going to hell. Because you believe that particular thing, you're going to hell. Because you don't agree on this like secondary doctrinal issue, you're definitely going to hell. Like that's proclaiming who's saved and who isn't is not, our, is not ours to do. We don't have that authority. We don't have the ability to do that. Moreover, it can be comforting. As an evangelist, you're going to be positioned in a, a place of ministry for someone. You may not be a pastor. You may not be uh, a deacon. You may not be a small group leader. But you, as the person who led this person to Christ, you will be in a position to minister to them. And those, those, those times will come. Well, they'll, they'll experience loss. And they'll come to you and they'll ask, like, is my sister in hell? Is my uncle in hell? hell and and when you you will by the grace of god have the authority of scripture to say like look i don't i don't know i don't know and as as a result you 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 can't preach them into heaven at their eulogy and you can't proclaim them into hell as you minister to this person you don't know here is what philippians 2 encourages christians to do so once they're saved here's one way that you can know whether or not someone is saved, they're going to bear fruit, they're going to have the Holy Spirit, they're going to have spiritual gifts, they're going to produce results by their faith, they're going to have deeds. Here's, here's what Philippians 2 describes. Adopt the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus, who, now this portion of the text, Paul is like reciting this, uh, what, what he's giving us like this beautiful traditional proclamation and teaching, this, this Christology, meaning a study of, of Christ who existing in the form of God did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited. That's a unique translation within the CSB. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of humanity. And when he had come as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. For this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. This is reminiscent. This is similar to what you'll see in the opening chapter of Hebrews. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We don't know who's saved and who isn't saved, but we do know is that every tongue in heaven and on earth and under the earth will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is a passage wherein Paul is equipping us and calling us to look not only for our own interests, but also for the interests of others. Our attitude should be the same as Christ Jesus, as described here in Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 11. A heavily Christological passage that can also serve as evidence that we are Christ-like, that we are saved. You know what this is like if you're a Christian. You know what it was like when you underwent transformation. You suddenly didn't care about the same things you cared about before. And you cared about things you never cared about before. You cared more about others. It wasn't about virtue signaling. You didn't have to take a selfie every time you fed a homeless person. Like, you just love that homeless person. You care about other people. This is, this is adopting the same attitude as Christ Jesus, who, existing in the form of God, doesn't consider equality with God something to be exploited. Watch out, by the way, quick side note, there's a false teaching that I've heard even at my previous church. Uh, some, some of the people who would teach at this church would, would say, uh, say that Jesus somehow was stripped of his divinity then when coming to the earth. Rather, what, that's not what the text says. He emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of humanity. There's nothing here about Jesus being stripped of his omniscience. In fact, Jesus made, makes prophecies. Now, he makes prophecies. He's not, he, he's one with the Father. See John 16. He, he knows the future. See Matthew 24. Like he predicts the, his own crucifixion. He knows what is to come. He is assuming the form of a servant. 
He did not consider his equality with God something to be exploited. So he humbles himself, that's verse 8, by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. This is how you can know you're really bearing evangelistic fruit. This person becomes humbled by God. And they're obedient like Jesus. For this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every other name. Philippians chapter 2 tells us to have the same attitude as Christ. And when you see that Christ-like attitude manifest in the person with whom you've just prayed to receive Christ, you can have some sense of peace that this person truly is saved. They're going to, they're going to at times, they're going to at times take back the selfish nature. They're going to at times mess up because you and I do the same thing, don't we? We have our same moments, right? We all have moments of weakness and we lose our self-control for a time from, from time to time. But in the end, this is one thing you can observe in your friend whom you've led to Christ. They take on Christ likeness. And tomorrow we'll look at Colossians chapter 3 for more about this Christ-like character that can help you see that you are, in fact, bearing evangelistic fruit. It's really exciting. You have a front row seat when you evangelize to watch God transform someone's life. And it's so cool to see it from the outside looking in. Are you ready? Evangelize. <laughs>